and we can all right we're here okay well, we're live we're live terry Ijioma. nice nice uh, all right first of all uh welcome uh we are i think week six i can't remember now because we took off a couple of weeks one for the election and then you went on vacation which uh i was happy to hear that you were going on vacation and so yes. you, terry Ijioma, trade and travel and i'm an investor on on the uh, IG space and uh, also you can follow her on YouTube. I'll put all of that in the description. Of course, like, hit the thumbs up and share this uh, because we are going to class with Terry today. All right, first of all, before we get into all of these blinking numbers that are here, and this is literally mm -hmm. during trading time. Yes. So let me just say, I reached out to you. I was like, Terry, you sure you wanna go today? Cause I know the market is crazy and I don't know if you wanna actually take away from your ability to make millions of dollars right now <laughs> some people and give us this lesson but you were like yeah let's do it so i appreciate your time no problem i'm excited i did trade this morning but like this will be a great time to show people how you actually take a trade and hopefully by seeing me do it it'll like really take away some of their fears so i'm excited how was your vacation self-care is important and you took some time off were you were you okay you good I'm good, but it wasn't really vacation. <laughs> um, I went to Seattle and I got a chance to film with two of my friends, Mark uh, Monroe and jo uh, JoLynn GC. And they have like a YouTube channel, awesome channel, the Come Up series. And we just filmed, they're investors too. So we just filmed content. So excited about what we did together. It was very refreshing to be with like other investor friends, but at the same time, we were working, so. Okay. So you didn't go see the needle? Well, I mean, we're still in a pandemic, so I'm expecting you to be socially distanced and wearing a mask, because I, I need you to not get COVID or anyone else for that matter. Praise the Lord. We're going to claim that in Jesus' name, shoot. Uh, <laughs> such an agree, yes. All right. Um, All right, but, so yeah. just, you know, we took off a week because the election, you, you said previously, that the election uh, would be volatile for the market, and it was, uh, but it actually the market did well. Please explain well, that. Well, see, to tell you the truth, it's a tale of two cities in the market right now. So at the same time that you might say, like after the election, it started running up, right before the election, it was running down. So there were a lot of people seeing red in their account. If they got in maybe two weeks before the election, then they still didn't see their money come back, especially if they were in technology stocks. Um, also like the semiconductors, a lot of the, a lot of really great companies, people were profit taking right before the election. So they had come down pretty good. They did come into some buyer levels. Like we saw it on the chart. My students and I were like, oh wow, this is beautiful. They came into some buyers levels and then right after the election started skyrocketing back up, but they really just came back to where they were before, um, before the election. It wasn't even like they just like ran up too much more. And then when the vaccine news came out, again, you had this tale of two cities. So all of the tech companies and the stay at home companies started falling again. And then the uh, travel and leisure started skyrocketing up. So it really depends. This is like a real stock pickers market right now because it really depends how your portfolio was lined up to how you're actually doing right now. Okay, so how are you doing? I'm doing okay. So I am, I'm excited about a couple positions. Today I traded Boeing and, and last week I traded Boeing and Boeing's been like going crazy. We're actually gonna take a trade in Boeing. So I'm excited about that. However, on the flip side, I'm also in PayPal and PayPal, it looks like it's positive right now, but at the same time, it's a lot lower than where it was. Amazon, I'm in Amazon. Amazon's a lot lower than where it was before the election and before earnings. It had these phenomenal earnings, but then it came down. So I'm, I'm in that in that tale of two cities kind of place. I have pl like I have this unrealized loss in my portfolio from some really good companies that normally would be doing amazing. And then I have like these random, I didn't expect this to be this good, this quick companies um, from like Boeing and Nvidia still doing well. So those are two in my portfolio as well. So 
I'm, I'm, I'm happy, but at the same time, it could be better if tech would join the ride. <laughs> all right. So let's, let's get with the, what, what's the, all of these flashing blinking things that I'm looking at here. Okay. So I wanted to show people how to actually take a trade and we're going to take two different trades. We're going to take a trade in stock and then a trade in options so that they can see kind of how both of them work. And yeah, I'm super excited. This is going to be such a great learning experience. So what we're looking at right now is my watch list and I trade about 30 companies. So if you guys look, um, you can see this tale of two cities going on. So when you scroll up, when I heard the vaccine news, I moved a lot of vaccine friendly stocks to the top of my list. So you see like Boeing, Southwest Airlines, Visa, those are at the top. But then if you scroll down, I have a lot of my work from home companies down here and they're struggling. So DocuSign, Teladoc, um, Zoom is in here somewhere. They're kind of struggling right now right so you see that there's between the green and the reds this is showing you kind of what's up and what's down now the and ones before and before you continue this is uh -huh. for uh educational entertainment purposes just because you're looking at her stock portfolio she's not telling you to trade in the stocks that she's trading in or even watching uh y'all enter at your own risk i just want to say that Thank you. Thank you so much. Because <laughs> that's so true. I, I traded everything trade that, that Terry had on her watch list and I lost all my money. Nope. Mm -mm. Not on nope. us. Right? Not on us at all. So now the next thing that I, I would do as a trader is I would go into some of these and I would see like where their stock price is on the chart. And we don't have time today to show you how to read charts, but I will just show you what I mean when I say tale of two cities. Like, look at Amazon here. Amazon is a great company, wonderful company, but look at where its current price is. So I'm going to show you, before the election, it had gotten up here to like 3300 And actually, even before that, in October, say you were just trading Amazon in October, you were up here at like $3,445. Now, yes, that was near the highs, we like we talk about that that's near sellers levels that's where you should have been taking some profit but let's just assume you were in amazon for the long run you were really excited middle of october because your stocks were doing super well and then now look at this green the green down here is where the, the current price is so right now it's at 3121 and even here like this is another these lines are are just me showing you guys some things like look right here this one right here at 32.99 this was it was after the election or excuse me it was yeah so i believe that this was right after the election it jumped back up here but just look a couple of weeks before it it had come way down here to wow. three three thousand it had even gone below three thousand and this was right after earnings which is crazy for amazon because amazon reported just blockbuster earnings it was doing so well and then the stock still fell and then right after after elections it it jumped back up but now look at where the current price is it's back down to where it was before the election so this is where you know if you thought oh man amazon's a good company it's going to keep rising your portfolio is probably red right now and you don't really know why so why why is it you know terry and 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 I like that this is this, you know, is a great example because people think, you know, that they can guess what's going to happen, that, you know, there's a lot of speculation, but you mm -hmm. use charts for you it's science for you. It's math yeah. it's all about the math. So why is it doing this despite the earnings, despite people using Amazon and the holidays coming up and all this other stuff? So there's a couple things. One, if you were to look back to see why did it jump up after elections? There was some buyers back here in September. If you remember, the price of Amazon had jumped down, and actually it's more down here. And I know you guys don't really know what these, these candlesticks mean, but just, just look at this area. Like down here, there was a, a green candle down here around $2,900. Amazon went down to here in September and then had this run up. 
So there were some banks buying in that 2,900 area. So when Amazon fell back down after earnings, it fell into this area where big banks were buying. So it made sense for it to jump back up. And then right after that, it, it came into some areas where it's starting to get high again. Those same banks that bought at 2,900, they were taking their profits right after the election. And so there's some profit taking up here towards where I, I drew that higher line towards that 3,300. So really there's some profit taking. I think another part of this, and one reason why Amazon may not jump back up as fast, me, so I'm gonna speak for myself, not all traders, but right now I'm planning for tax season. And if you're a trader, you have to be really strategic about what you're doing for taxes right now. So if you're in Amazon and you had some big gains earlier, then you probably are either taking, you took some profit on that, and now you're planning the you're playing the longer term game. You don't want profits again going into December because you're gonna have to pay taxes on that. So you're doing some like longer swing trades. So there's no real reason for you to make money. It's more so if I have a loss, let me get out at this loss. They call it like tax loss harvesting. So any losses that they have, they're gonna start selling those losses. And so some of these companies that rode up a lot. They either took their profits earlier, and now as it's coming down, they're probably taking some of those losses too. So that's just that's just an idea. I don't know. I can't speak for everybody, but I do know that that's probably some of the stuff that's happening in the tech sector. They've run up so much that people are starting to take their profits, and then they're not really – like there's no real big buyers coming in through the end of the year because it just isn't necessary. I, I love that you said that, and it makes perfect sense. And people who want to understand these candlesticks will have to take your class. We'll drop uh, yeah. a link in the description <laughs> where you can go take the class. Uh, you just started a class in November, uh, top of November. Um, mm -hmm. And it's self, self, you know, it's at your own pace. So it's not too intimidating, but um, yeah. yeah, if you want to learn more about these candlesticks, you got to take Terry's class. All right, go ahead. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And I think a lot of people get confused. They're like, wait, do I have to wait to start? No, the curriculum is all online and it's there. We just start every month. We restart classes to just supplement and help you help you stay on track. So every month you can kind of jump into some of our coaching calls as well as the online curriculum. So now let's go into Boeing because this is the baby today. Now, here's a couple things that I wanted to mention. So if you look at Boeing's chart, you're like, what? Look at that big jump up. So let's put these, let's put these lines again. So it came down to here, beginning of November, right before the election. So it was down here at this like 145 area. And now all of a sudden it had this big jump up, that first jump. Let me try to move this so you guys can see. This first jump right here, we call that a gap. And we do talk about that in VIP, but like, let's just say the gap from here to here. This was that first vaccine news. So when Pfizer said that it had a vaccine, then Boeing jumped overnight from 150. Right. Wait, hold on. Boeing's not a pharmaceutical company. It's a... It's a plane company though. So if everybody in the travel industry was not buying planes, now all of a sudden they can. They can, well, people are just starting to travel again. So like the bet is, okay, there's only two people that build planes. People will start to travel again. So this is a great company. But this is another reason why Boeing jumped. If you look over, let me just show you. So if you look over the trajectory of Boeing, so one, it, there were some buyers way back in June in this area around 140, the last time that we had this big run up. And Boeing had run up to 180 and then it ran up to $230. And now if you had to pick out of all of the travel leisure companies that like that are doing well or not so much doing well, they were doing poorly, but now because this vaccine are gonna do well, you wanna pick something that you know in the past did really well. And that would be Boeing. The last time that that Boeing was in this area, this 141 area, it jumped up to 230. So now that it's back here at 140, like it's one of the best companies that will profit and you know that it can run higher. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Now, are okay. you, is this an active trade that you're in? Uh, yes. 
So, <laughs> but in different, in different portfolio, different portfolio. Um, but let me show you something else on Boeing. Like one of the reasons why I really wanted to get back into this. One, look at, look at where Boeing used to be before the coronavirus. So this is a weekly chart. And I know this is small, like hard to see, but like, just look back up to here. Is that 300? Yes. So before coronavirus, Boeing was at $319. And before that, it had been at $400. So if you were purely, we haven't talked a lot about reward to risk ratio, but if you were just thinking on a longer term basis, what is my potential reward to my potential risk? Down here at 150, like where it was before the virus news, your risk from, and let's just say from the lows to the highs, your risk from 150 down to where it stopped in March was only about $50 of risk. But your potential upside from this 150 area up to, up to here where it was before Corona is the difference between 300 and 150, that's $150. So in, in my school, when we're talking about reward to risk, if your reward is $150 and your risk is $50, well, your reward to risk ratio is three to one. Your, your potential reward is three times what you're risking. So Boeing is just a good investment at that level, right? right? So that's kind of what I was looking at and what traders would be looking at. Like, what's my reward to risk? Where, where does it have potential to go? How healthy is it? So we also know that soon Boeing will be announcing whether it gets approved for the 737 MAX again. So that will be another catalyst for it. And then in general, it's a, it's a duopoly. There's only two companies making planes. So if we start traveling again, Boeing will get some of their contracts back. So that's some of the things that I've been thinking about. Okay. Yeah. So in and out of a trade. Yes. When would you okay. get out of this or when would you get into it? So I got into it, like if we look at a 15 minute level chart, I actually got into this trade down here at 191. And then I had a thousand contracts of Boeing. So an options contract is 100 shares. And then I had a thousand of those. So I had a lot of, <laughs> a lot of contracts on this. Yeah, well, not all in. I was still trying to, trying to be thoughtful. And it is turning around a little bit now, but I was down here when I got in and then I exited um, a lot of my trade. I exited 900 shares when it passed $97. So right around here where it started having a little bit of one. Like, yeah. So did you get out too early. Cause now it's at 200. I did, but at the same time, I made six figures on this trade and I didn't want to be greedy. So I got out of the first part of it and then let a little bit of it still run. Okay. So yeah, because to take the trade, like to take the trade that I took, it costs about $500,000. So like I didn't want to potentially lose the 500,000. So I said, let me make 100,000 then get out of it and then let the rest run. And so, the, so I'm still in it. So I'm still excited about the ones I do have. Yeah. Could I have made more? Yes. Today, the whole challenge could have been done. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, like I'm trying to be really good about not getting too greedy with trades because I've done that in the past too, held on way too long and then lost it all. Yeah. And, and I love that. I mean, I love the discipline of what you do because I think it's super important that people temper themselves, you know? Yes, you could have made three more dollars times a hundred thousand. You do the math on that, right? Mm -hmm. But you could have lost all of it. Yeah. And risk to reward has to, you know, it's good to come away ahead. You don't have mm -hmm. to get it all. There's always tomorrow. Yes. Yes. You know, and I think, you know, this is not luck. You're not rolling dice. You're not, you're not, you know, gambling. You're not playing a lotto. This is a, a legitimate strategic as it goes up another dollar. All right. But that's why you got to do it and walk away, I guess, too, because otherwise you'll be second uh -oh, guessing you yourself. What? What happened? Did I get off? Oh, yeah. You have froze a little bit. 
Um, but also I, I had to remember too about my, or maybe in my, I might have froze a little bit, but I also have to remember too about that tax thing I was telling you about. So I met with my accountant and my tax bill is going to be crazy um, for this year. And so we're trying to think through ways to like not, <laughs> not have a ton of like extra money to have to pay the government. So what I did is I took, um, I took that profit because I'm like, yeah, I mean, I still want to make at least at least this. So this is good. I just made $100,000 and I made that in like 30 minutes. So it was really fast this morning. Made it. Let's go with the rest of your day. But then what I did is I took the position and then I put it into some longer term options that don't expire until next year. And that way, if they still do well, then great. But it won't it won't affect my this year's performance yeah now, do, do you put money aside every time you make money like what's your what's your how i pay my taxes method what do you do how do you do that honestly not really i just i have a savings account and i just know that like eventually it's going to come out of that savings account but for me it's better that i'm able to have access to my cash than just putting it away um to excuse me, too far away. So I do, well, let me, and let me rephrase. So in trade station, like that's the broker that I use, they have a crypto account and they have this coin called USDC coins. And that USDC coin um, gives 4% interest right now. So what? yes, yes, you got to check it out. So it's called <laughs> USDC. Uh-huh, 4%. And it's backed by the US dollar. So that's kind of the cool thing about it. Um, the U S dollar is, it's one for one U S dollar to USDC coin. So what I do is when I just have cash that's sitting there, I'll move it into the coin so that I could make that 4% and that 4% pays out monthly. So it's a year, it's an annual 4%, but it pays you every month. So for me, that's, that's almost like me getting a paycheck, like from a job that really Karen that's my fallback if I decide to just I'm done with everything I don't want to teach I don't want to trade then I'll just have that that USDC account pay me monthly and live my best life mm -hmm. oh, okay. <laughs> I love I love the options too I love that you have all these different ways that because you have made money you're letting your money you got your money working for you boy you are pimping your dollars I love it. Right? Like if they just if they just sitting in a savings, they ain't doing enough work. I need them to get to, to moving. No. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. All right. Okay. Uh, so okay. So how, go ahead. Oh no, no, go ahead. I was gonna show you how to take a trade. So um it always happens that when I'm showing publicly, that's going to be the time where it doesn't go right. But I still want to do this anyway. And this is um like, I still want to show you how to place a trade so that if anybody's afraid and like, Terry, I just don't understand how you actually make the money, you can see. So first, let me look real quick at the chart to see where I think it's about to go. So I do know that it's probably going to come down soon because there were some people starting to sell around 198. Like, that's what the chart is saying. Eventually, though, it has the ability to keep running up to, it can keep running up to here to 208. It may get there by the end of the day, but I also know that there are some people that are going to start selling it around this amount. So why is that important? Because I could actually make money on this trade as it goes down, and I can decide to do a trade to make money on the way down. Or if I'm thinking that the stock will keep rising, I can try to make money on the way up. So I'll actually, um, I'll actually take both of those trades and, and we'll just see. Maybe next, next week we can come back and see which one did the best. Oh, I like that. You do that. Yeah, okay. All right, so I come up here to trade. And once again, I'm using TradeStation. Yours may look different if you're using a different broker. But this is my, and this is my SIM account. So up there where it says simulated order, my students, they're practicing in a fake account. It's, it's real-time data. It feels just like your account, but it's a simulated account. All right. 
So now I'm gonna buy some shares. So let's say I'm gonna buy 100 shares. I like doing limit orders instead of um, real, uh, instead of a market order. So that where it says order type, limit order just allows me to put in the price. Market order buys at whatever the stock price is now. I personally think it's better to do a limit order so that you have a bit more control over where you get into the stock. Now, it looks like the current stock is at $286. So I'm going to need to either get in close to that or, um, or a little lower. And it looks like it's coming down. So mm -hmm. let's see if we can get in a little lower. So current price is $2079. I'm going to do $2076 and see if we can get in. All yeah, right. Hit it. Ah, look yeah, at it. Go down lower. Go down lower. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go, go. Yeah, go to two. Let's do two seventy. Okay. All right, and then oh, duration. <laughs> Gary's like, let's go. <laughs> but I do want to show you guys. Don't worry. I'm not. Remember, I told you from the chart it looked like it was about to go down. So I'm not. I'm not in a rush to get into it just yet. Um, but this duration thing down here is also important. If you're somebody that's at work and you're like, I don't have time to watch this, this thing called GTC, that just says good till canceled. And if you put that in, it'll keep the order in the computer until price comes down and hits your order. So that don't way you hit, can go. To, <laughs> don't, hit, don't, you don't do it yet because it's already down. Put in 245. Okay, okay. <laughs> Now, usually I will look at a chart to figure this out, but let's go for it. Review the order, send. All right. So, and see, now it's coming back up, but that's okay. If it, like that GTC, we'll just leave that in the computer all day. And if it gets hit, it'll come down. Ah, we're in. And we got a good price. We got even better than what we put in. We got it for 244. Just that so, quick. When, yeah. I didn't see it hit 244. Uh. The computer will do its thing. Okay. <laughs> we don't have to even see it. That, to tell you the truth, that's one of the reasons why I like TradeStation because they're known for getting you a better price than, um, than you could even see. And like now, if you look up here where it says long 100, we've already made $11. And look, it's going up. We made 21 so far. Okay. And so let me, sh let me show you real quick. We said we'd wait till next week, but just so people know how to get out of a trade, like it's $25 up already. If I wanted to get out of it, I'd come over back into trade, press sell. I still have that same quantity, but now I get to choose where I'm selling. We got in at 2044. Let's say we wanted to get out at 20. Let's, let's just say we wanted to get out at 201. If we the get out. I was, thinking, I was thinking that same number. Oh, good. Like, I, okay. I can't do it because I'm like, I'm guessing. I'm sitting here. I'm like, yeah, do 202. I don't even know what I'm doing. No, so usually you would have these set from the chart. Remember that 208 that I was telling y'all? It could go to 208 from the chart. Like that's really where I'd probably put this. But for, for practice purposes, let's just put it here. And we're going to go back to our duration, put in GTC so that it'll just sit in the computer for us. If we did day, what would happen is it would sit in there, but just for today. And then tomorrow that order would be gone. So now we got this order in the system, you see there? And mm -hmm. we're making money. We're already making $46 on this trade. And if it goes up to 201, it'll get us out. And that's how you make money trading stocks. Bingo, bango. Now, how much does it mm -hmm. cost to make that trade? So it uh, really depends who your broker is. With TradeStation, they let us trade equities for free. So you didn't have to pay any commission to do this trade. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yep. If I did this with options, though, they do charge for options. And most brokers now are charging for options still. Um, for TradeStation, I think their options are 50 cents, either like per contract and, oh, no, no, per trade. I think it's like 50 cents per trade. And then they give us a discount of 20% off of that. Now, Why would let me. You trade this as op for options. I'm just curious. What'd you say? Why would you trade this? Why would this be? an options trade what's the let me, okay so let me show you that and then i also want to show you how to put a stop in on this position too um but so this is the options board and they call it an options matrix but each one of these you see where it says like let's look right here where it says five dollars and 65 cents 
So it's going to cost me $5.65 per share to, um, to control 100 shares of Boeing. So you times this by 100, it's only going to cost me $560 to control 100 shares versus I just did that stock position. If I go over to positions, uh-oh, it cost me 20000 to buy this with stock to buy 100 shares. You see where it says total cost? Um, yes. Yep. So it's the difference between being able to control that same 100 shares, but with less money, with options. So I'm going to pay up front, but at the same time, I can control those same shares with less money. Ah, so, mm -hmm. okay. So instead of putting in $200,000 or $20,000, okay. You put in $560. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. What's the risk though? The, there's the a risk, risk. Yes, there's definitely a higher risk. Options are based on time value and they lose money as you get closer to expiration. So if that, if Boeing doesn't move by Friday and that was my expiration for that $560, then I could lose the whole $560. Got it. Mm -hmm. Versus the stock, you had to pay more for it, but you could let that sit in the computer for as long as you want. And eventually the stock will probably come back around. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, while we're in here though, let me also show you all how to put in a stock. Cause I just think it's important for everybody to know. So I'm a covenant positions. I have this position here with Boeing and it's going up and down. And then I have this open order. Um, this order here is the one we filled at 245 cents. And then we want to sell at 201. But what if I take that position off and put in a stop that says, you know what, if I got in at $245, but if this thing goes below 198, get me out of it. I don't want to lose more than $300. What do I do? So I can come back to Boeing here. Let's go back to the chart. I know I'm flipping fast, but so I can come back to Boeing. And this time when I trade, I'm going to switch the order type to stop market. You'll see down here I had limit market, stop market. And I'm also going to switch the action to sell. So I want to sell this position, but I only want to sell it if it comes down to 198. If it's higher than that, then just let it run. This is really good for a lot of those people that are kind of buy and hold investors, but you still want some protection in your account. So I can switch this now. I've set the price. And let's say I set it at 198. And, and this usually I'd pick that stock price based on the charts as well. But this is just for examples of how to place a trade. So I put that in. I'm also going to change the duration to GTC because I want that to stay in the computer for at least a couple months and, or as long as it can. Then I'm going to review the sell order and then say, okay. And now it should pop up for us. There we go. Let me make this bigger so you guys can see it. Oh, I should have, hold on. Let me move this line out the way so y'all can see. But we got at, we got into the position let me actually move, I'm gonna move this down just so y'all can see a little better. Orders. I'm gonna move it down to 195. And what this means though is we got in at 200. If it gets down to 195, I'll lose $500, but at least I can sleep at night because I'll know that I won't lose more than $500. And so I think that for a lot of traders is the piece. You're like, I just don't want to lose and, and I don't want to lose everything. Well, if you put a stop in, your loss is capped. Um, so, okay. And for people who will have jobs that are trading, you know, who have full-time jobs or people who don't, you know, can't sit online and watch what's happening, this is like worry-free. Do you know yes. if it drops below, I'm selling. If you, I can buy it at this price, when it hits that price, it's going to happen automatically. And I think mm -hmm. people should put their whole lives on automatic. The more you can put on automatic, your savings, your investments, the more you can live your life on the way to, you know, because you literally trade and then go on about your business. I do. I do. 
And I, I mean, sometimes it bites me because like today, it kept running. I could have kept making money. But at the same time, like I had the rest of the day to kind of enjoy the day. So, hey, is you know, you, you decide how you want to trade and you win some, you lose some. Um, but just so you guys can see this, like, are you, are you able to see this? So it shows us where we got in a hundred at a limit order of twenty four twenty two hundred dollars and 44 cents. That's where we got in. And then our stop, we have a hundred shares that we'll get out of if it comes down to one ninety five. And then we just let that run. Yep. Yep. And then you can in trade station. What I do like is I could do a bracket order and put both of those exits in at the same time. Like I could have that 201 exit in the computer and also my stop in the computer. And like, that's a little bit more advanced. We don't have to go into that here, but that's really how you can start doing set it and forget it type of orders. I love it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you yeah, that, Terry. You know she done gave y'all some secret sauce today. I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate no that. No problem. No problem. So, so how are we doing in the hub? So the hub is doing okay. I have to admit, we have some unrealized losses right now with that Amazon PayPal. There's so let me. I'll actually show. Well, I don't. I'll, Before you do that, I can't show you the accounting here. Oh, go right. ahead. I don't do that. There, there's a stock. Is that S M H shaking my head? What is that? That right under uh, <laughs> this one. Right? This this is an ETF, so it has all the semiconductors in it. So oh. if you wanted to trade like Nvidia, AMD, um, a lot of the different semiconductor stocks, but you didn't want to actually trade the individual company, SMH has the those companies in it. And what's okay. cool it's about it is shaking my head. It's not shaking my head. Okay. No. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> But you can see that it's coming back up to, I think this is an all-time high for it. Let's check. Yeah, it's coming back up to an all-time high. So we got to see if it'll pass through that. But what's really cool, a lot of people like to trade this with options because look how inexpensive the options are here. You have to kind of refresh it to make it right. But like for just, three, you times this by 100. So just $300, you can own, you can control 100 shares of this. So People like to really trade this. And then they really like to trade it with leaps. Like a leap is when you say, it's kind of like a buy and hold, but with options, because this doesn't expire till January, 2022. So you got two years for this to act right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> and, and it still only cost you $24. So, so that's $2,480 per contract but remember that's like controlling 100 shares of this thing so yeah so it's it's really cool i i think that like one of the coolest things about trading is that you never stop learning there's always these like other advanced strategies like you get down the first thing and it's like okay cool got that then it's like oh but did you know about verticals and options and leaps and it's like whoa <laughs> So it's, it's really cool. Once you know the toolbox and like tools, it's really good. Well, I want to um, wrap up here and then maybe next week you can come back and show us the hub chart and everything. And we'll hopefully the Amazon will be a realized gain, not an un, uh, unrealized loss. Yes. And, and, you know, let's, but I'm, you know, I'm grateful for the lessons, even in the midst of you doing this magnanimous thing and, you know, raising money for for this nonprofit that I started, but also that you're also giving people insight into how to do this and put their toes in the water. I, I think this is so valuable for people out there who were afraid to get into stocks. And now you get to see it's not so scary and Terry's super rich doing it. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, listen, thank you again. We'll see you next week. You gonna be yes. ready for everything? Okay, all right. And, and this was this was so so amazing. I I'm I'm fascinated by all of the blinking lights. I'm gonna probably go down a rabbit hole. <laughs> well, we're already making money too. That's a good, the cool thing. Look, we're already up twenty three dollars in our Boeing position. So, <laughs> Terry Egioma, invest with Terry. Also, I'm an investor on Instagram, which kept popping up. So you are using this to your Instagram page. I appreciate that. We'll put all of this in the links, uh, excuse me, all, all the links in the description. 
and uh, share, like this, give the thumbs up and uh, follow Terry too. follow her, her YouTube channel, because she's doing some amazing things over there. I'll give the link as well. I thank, thank you. you. So much. I love you so much. Love you too. Thank you. Have a good week.